Are you done? I'm done, girl. I'm done. I'm letting the spirit use me. Welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel. Before we get into today's installment of our mega church messiness series, hit it, Auntie Regina. We fall down and we eat snacks. We fall down and we eat snacks. For our snacks are so delicious in our mouths. Shala! Shala! Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Make yourself comfortable and scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com. It's our online concession stand that has an assortment of applewood smoked bacon jerky, blue raspberry licorice, and butter toffee peanuts. To better understand this story, we have to take you back to May 29, 1933, when 13-year-old Olivia Jenkins gave birth to her daughter, Frances. The child's father was Olivia's stepfather. Frances grew up thinking that her mom was actually her sister, and she was told that her grandmother was her mother. It wasn't until Frances was 16 that she found out the truth and all the details about her biological parents. Frances was destroyed and broken. She went on to marry Donald McClurkin, and on November 9, 1959, she gave birth to their son, who we now know as Pastor Donnie McClurkin. In an interview with Praise 102.5, Donnie said his mother was so broken by her own childhood that he and his siblings became her only hope and salvation. She taught them all how to sing, and Donnie was convinced that he had the best voice out of all the children. He told TBN Praise the Lord that although his dad was in the home, he never spent time with him. There was such a huge disconnect that his dad never gave him any praise or acknowledgement. At the age of eight, Donnie's two-year-old brother was following him across the street when a speeding car hit his little brother and ended his life. In the aftermath of his brother's passing, Donnie's mom said, And my mother telling me that I killed her son. My mother took the wrong Three days later, on the day of his brother's funeral, eight-year-old Donnie was violated by his great uncle. He told Ebony Magazine, An eight-year-old mind can't handle such levels of perversion. Experiencing this much pain, anger, confusion, and grief in such a short period of time was traumatic for Donnie. He told Praise 102.5, Wherever you get broken, you're stuck there. According to amanclinics.com, the emotional pain of childhood trauma lasts long after the incident has ended and can have a negative impact on mental health, brain health, and cognitive function. Early intervention and treatment can help. However, Donnie kept the incident to himself since his family was still grieving the loss of his brother and his mother was so angry at him for the role she thought he played in his brother's passing. Things quickly declined at home. His dad became an alcoholic and his mom abused substances. During a 1969 church service, the minister told the congregation that Christ died because he loves us. This idea intrigued Donnie, and he wondered if God could help him. He gave his life to Jesus, and the church became his entire world. In an interview with Ebony Magazine, he defined the church as a place where I felt at peace and felt like I belonged. But then, at the age of 13, he was taken advantage of again. This time, it was by his great uncle's son. The two incidents led him to believe that perhaps he was attracted to men, but he said he prayed over it and refused to accept it. While all that was happening, things at home weren't any better. His parents' addictions made Donnie retreat from the world, and he avoided human interaction by pouring all of his energy into church and music. At some point, his parents got divorced. By this time, he had mastered the piano and created musical groups, including the McClurkin Singers. He also formed the New York Restoration Choir, which released an album in 1975 called I See a World. In 1983, while working with a church choir, Donnie met Pastor Marvin Winans. Pastor Winans invited Donnie to Detroit to help start a ministry. Six years later, in 1989, Donnie made the move to Detroit. He became an associate minister at Perfecting Church and began touring and singing at different churches nationwide. He released his self-titled studio album in 1996, which went gold. His song, We Fall Down, was released in 2000 and was in heavy rotation on gospel radio stations. And Donnie started to receive even more recognition for his talents and sermons. While it should have been a joyful time for him, he was struggling behind the scenes as he attempted to come to terms with his sexuality. 
While speaking at a convention, he stated that he misinterpreted the acts that were committed against him at an early age for his gay sexual orientation. In his book, which we've linked in the description box, he stated, The abnormal use of my sexuality continued until I came to realize that I was broken and that homosexuality was not God's intention for my masculinity. His first intimate act was with a man, but he said that he was cured of homosexuality by a deliverance from God the moment he conceived a child. Now which one of y'all just done let Donnie skeet up in you? Raise your hand, ho. In April 2000, Donnie and a woman named Kim welcomed their son, Matthew. He and Kim never got married, and one year after their son was born, Donnie reportedly adopted a nine-year-old girl named Michelle. Now y'all know how Auntie Regina feels about grown-ass men adopting young girls on their own. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Although he viewed having a child out of wedlock as a personal failure, he also stated that conceiving a child helped him restore what he defined as his manhood. So, was it a bad idea for a man who was struggling with so many personal issues to bring two children into his life? Apparently so, according to Donnie. He told TBN's Praise the Lord that the circumstances of his childhood affected how he raised his son Matthew, and he admitted his relationship with his son was broken for several years. Although he provided financial support to Matthew, the emotional support was lacking. Donnie said, I got up in the morning and prayed a simple prayer. I looked up to God and said, God, I'm afraid so help me to be a good father. First of all, you became a pappy for all the wrong reasons, and now you're creating more generational trauma. Good job, Ninja, good job. Donnie became ordained as a pastor, and in 2001, Marvin sent him to Freeport, New York to help establish Perfecting Faith Church. As of this video, Donnie is still the church's senior pastor. At some point, Donnie realized it was time to make some changes in his life. You think? Although he was adamant that he had kicked what he described as a 20-year struggle with homosexuality, Donnie told Cross Rhythm's website that the fight wasn't over. He said, Just because God delivers you doesn't mean that the temptations don't come back, and people need to realize that. It is not odd or strange for the very thing God has delivered you from to come back to see if everything's still cool, you know? Boy, stop lying. Donnie went on to say that the more he preached about being cured of homosexuality, the more people tried to test him. However, he learned that surrounding himself with people who kept him accountable kept him on the path of healing. Count on me through the canton a friendship that will never end when you are weak. In 2001, he released his memoir and a documentary where he talks about his childhood and his struggles with homosexuality and bisexuality. He told Spokesman website that revisiting his demons was painful, but through the trauma, he obtained closure. In addition to that, he voiced his criticism of church leaders who continuously demonize homosexuals from the pulpit. Donnie said, You've got the preachers calling them names. We become harsh, and we haven't portrayed the love of Jesus Christ. Some people questioned whether Donnie was sincere, especially as he became more vocal as one of the lead figures in the ex-gay movement. And according to the Jasmine Brand website, on at least one occasion, he compared being gay to drug addiction and said it was God's plan that gays should change their sexual orientation. As he continued to preach about how he turned his life around, one of his former lovers decided to put him on blast. Here we go! Here we go! An unidentified man contacted a blogger named Clay Kane and stated he met Donnie backstage at a gospel event in early 2001. The man said they exchanged contact information and started communicating via phone and email. The man claimed Donnie started to open up to him about how lonely it was on the road, and Donnie reportedly explained how he would go into his room and cry all the time. According to the man, things turned intimate a few months later. The man described their bedroom interactions as uncomfortable due to Donnie's love for being dominated and engaged in role-playing. Fix it, Jesus. The man said Donnie would frequently go into remission and he wouldn't hear from him for a period of time. After being on and off from 2001 through 2004, their fling sizzled out. Despite whatever was going on in his personal life, Donnie continued to be very vocal about his life as an ex-homosexual. During an appearance at a November 2009 church convention, he told the crowd, Were it not for this Jesus, I would be a homosexual today. This God is a deliverer. 
And then during a 2009 sermon at the annual Holy Convocation Convention, Donnie referred to homosexuals as vampires. And at the 2011 Church of God in Christ Convention, he issued a rebuke and called being gay a perversion of the youth and the church. He even went as far as to insinuate that young people's sexuality is affected by fatherlessness. 2013 was a tough year for Donnie. He lost both of his parents, and because of his anti-gay remarks, he was disinvited from that year's March on Washington Memorial Concert. Beat it, Ashy. When the Supreme Court ruled for marriage equality in 2015, Donnie issued a statement of disgust and urged his church to stand against all sin and not bow its knee to it. So yeah, he went from criticizing church leaders who demonized homosexuals to being one of the loudest antagonists in the pulpit. Just confused. In an August 2016 episode of the Praise the Lord talk show, the show's host, Matt Crouch, announced that Donnie was engaged to fellow gospel singer Nicole C. Mullen. Yeah, she better than me. That's a brave woman right there, honey. Donnie, who was a guest on the show that night, didn't deny the news. Instead, he simply responded, Honestly, the only thing in my life that is missing is marriage. Financially, I'm there. Spiritually, I'm almost there. Emotionally, I'm getting it together. But the only thing that's missing out of everything that I'm doing locally, cross-country, and globally is that aspect that makes family. Family is that wife that would make man whole, that element that brings favor to man. This ninja forgot about his children, didn't he? Talking about he trying to build a family. Take your ass home and build a relationship with them cheering. That's what you need to do. As for Nicole, well, she hopped on Twitter to clarify that they were only dating. We are headed toward that position, but there's protocol, you know. He hadn't met my dad yet. He hadn't spoken to him. And there are other things that he and I are still working toward that we're like, we want to make sure we do due diligence on this side. Um, are we going toward marriage? Absolutely. You know, will we be married this year? Good chance. <laughs> Okay, Donnie later posted a video on social media explaining that he and Nicole needed more counseling before they moved forward with tying the knot. Nah, Donnie, you need more counseling, okay? <laughs> you need more counseling. Whatever issues they were working through were left unresolved. RRG can confirm that Nicole moved on and married this tall glass of chocolate milk in December 2020. I ain't mad at you, Nikki. Tall, bald, and scrumptious. That's my type, honey. He got a brother, girl. Donnie continued on with his crusade to convince himself, <clears throat> oops, I mean to convince the world that he was no longer gay thanks to prayer and God's power. In an interview, he said, I believed that I was meant to be a whole man, made for one woman, and God brought it all about. I am delivered, and I know God can deliver others too. So how is he so sure that God could deliver others? Well, it all boiled down to his affiliation with an organization called Exodus International. Founded in the mid-1970s, the organization's mission was to help gay Christians become straight through the power of Jesus Christ and conversion therapy. Conversion therapy? Uh-uh, that sounds like some bullshit. That sounds like some straight bullshit. Oh, hell no, that sounds like something straight out of a Lifetime movie. That sounds like some real bullshit. Donnie became a contributor on Exodus International's website and frequently described his process of becoming saved and sanctified. In March 2018, an online user took to Twitter to claim that his mom sent him to Exodus sometime in the 90s. The online user added, The dudes that ran it took advantage of us. I lost my virginity in gay cure therapy. Yep, yeah, see, what I tell y'all, some bullshit. Shut it down. Shut that sh down. In subsequent tweets that have since been deleted, the online user stated that after telling his parents about what was going on, Exodus kicked him out and told his parents that he wanted to be gay and that he resisted God's help. Donnie did not respond to the allegations. Donnie said he doing the mute challenge. Oh, <laughs> okay. Mm. Exodus International shut down in 2013 after 37 years in business. The organization also issued an apology to the gay community for years of undue judgment by the organization and the Christian church as a whole. Kiss my ass. In December 2018, Donnie was driving on the highway when he lost consciousness. His car was totaled and he was hospitalized with a sprained wrist, a damaged knee, and he received stitches in his left thumb. That's what he went to the hospital for? If I was his nurse, I I would have discharged him immediately. Ninja, get your ass out of here, taking up beds and sh 
The years passed, and Donnie remained quiet as he focused on making music and sharing his testimony. Then he popped back up in an August 2021 episode of Uncensored. Donnie explained how he never had a long-term relationship, although he had flings with men and women. He admitted he still had urges to be with men, but he was choosing not to. He say choosing not to. Now listen, Auntie Regina got a serious question. I'm just curious now, because he talking a lot about interactions with men and women and homosexuality and all that. What what happened to the days of not having premarital sex? Is that old fashioned? Y'all let Auntie Regina know, cause but I remember back in the days you used to have to tarry <laughs> at the altar. You know what I'm saying? You used to have to sit on the pew. You you know, you was you wasn't having sex before marriage. But maybe I'm just a little outdated. But he seemed real free just talking about who he like, who he don't like, who he gonna be with, who he ain't gonna be with. Like I ain't heard him say yet. I'm not having sex before marriage. Y'all let Auntie Regina let Auntie Regina know. I'm like, maybe I'm just old. He compared homosexuality to diabetes by saying, "I don't eat sugar, but it doesn't mean that I don't want sugar." Boy, if you don't shut the hell up and go find a man to blow your back out. Never having a long-term relationship in my life and never being married, my thing is I chalk that up. I'm gonna probably be alone for the rest of my life, as far as a mate is concerned. Ninja, there are millions of ninjas in the world. Go find one. Online users called his story heartbreaking. One person tweeted, No one can tell me it's God's will for Donnie McClurkin to suffer loneliness to this extent because of who he's attracted to. Isolated from companionship to appease sinners in the church, and I am devastated for him. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below. And thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you for watching. Ah, ah, G.